Okay. So again, uh, thanks, Dirt. My name is Matt Dancho. I am the founder of Business Science, and what we do is open source software for business and financial analysis. So with me here today, uh, Davis, you, you want to just wave your hand? Okay. He's our software engineer, and um, what I'll be talking about is new tools for performing financial analysis within the Tidy ecosystem. Okay. So uh, goals today, I just want to discuss um, just briefly the existing financial an uh, analysis landscape. You guys already know it, but um, I do want to touch on that really quickly. And then I'll, I'll, I, I will also talk about or try to answer the question, why TidyQuant? And then um, what we'll talk about is the five core TQ functions. And then last, we'll show off uh, TidyQuant with data science at scale, one of the main benefits. All right, so the financial analysis landscape. There's a bunch of packages. We love them all. XTS, Zoo for time series, QuantMod and TTR, getting data, manipulating data, and then performance analytics for return metrics. These are well-developed packages, uh, and they've got a ton of useful functions in them, all for data transformation and financial analysis. We also have the Tidyverse, uh, a collection of packages that all have a well-developed infrastructure for a data science workflow. They um, are a little bit different than the XTS system, and we'll talk about that next. So we've got the XTS system, two, actually two systems, XTS and Tidyverse, each have benefits, okay? So you've got XTS, it's built for speed, it's matrix-based, it deals with the wide format because it can only handle uh, numeric columns, but it is fast, and we all know that. Tidyverse, on the other side. So we've got this thing that deals with data frames, all right? It's a little bit slower, but it's flexible, and it's built for scale. It can handle any types of data in the columns, which allows us to do uh, work with what's called the long format data frame. And basically what you're doing is you're, uh, it allows you to group by subsets of the data and apply functions to those groups. That's the main advantage, or one of the main advantages. So the theory behind TidyQuant, what we're trying to do and what we've done is integrated the Tidyverse with the uh, financial analysis packages. We're trying to get the best of both worlds. So user input is in data frames, input and output. Internally, what we're doing is converting to the XTS system, applying those functions, and then what we're getting is matrix speed with data frame flexibility and ultimately Tidyverse scalability. Okay, so there's five core functions. There's TQ get, which is to get data. Uh, there's TQ transmute and TQ mutate, and what this did, does is allow you to apply those quant mod TTR functions, such as like pe period returns or simple moving average or Bollinger bands, and you can apply this right to the data. Uh, we've got TQ portfolio, which is for aggregating portfolios, and then TQ performance, which is for the por performance analytics functions. So if you notice, it's got the import, transform, and model, very, the very same type of workflow that you have in the Tidyverse. Okay, so the key benefit of TidyQuant is scalability. Going from one asset to 500 assets is not that much different. So we've got T, uh, just one asset. We'll take the stock ticker Apple. Just put it into TQGet, and out comes your, you know, 10 years of stock data, very similar to QuantMod uh, get symbols. Going to 500 assets is where you get your advantage. So we have a handy little helper function called TQ index. We pass it S&P 500. That gets us the S&P 500 stocks. It's just you know a data frame of stocks. You pipe that into TQ get. You get those stocks converted into uh, all of the daily historical return or excuse me prices. And then if you tack on an additional group by and group it by the symbol, you're ready to do the um, the long analysis that I was talking about subsetting and applying functions. All right, so what did we do with S&P 500, or excuse me, what did we do with uh, the scalability? We analyzed the S&P 500, okay? So uh, taking that same code that was on that last slide, we added one additional line of code, TQ transmute, and applied uh, quant mod period returns. We got the returns. And then what we did was group them by stock symbol and um, basically just plotted or, or calculated the mean and the standard deviation. What this allowed us to do is um, get us the, uh, a, a nice graph that really essentially lets us, um, gives, gives us insight. 
uh, it shows an inverse relationship between the volatility and the returns. And this is something that we can use to make meaningful strategic decisions uh, when it comes to investments. We can extend that analysis very easily. So I talked about grouping by symbol. You can also group by symbol and year, so multiple combinations. Uh, I just piped that right into ggplot, and now we can compare the high performers and we can realize that, oh, not all high performers are created equal. So don't just go by the last graph, go by this graph too. Okay, and then uh, this is just to show you kind of a different example of scalability. We can also work with portfolios. So this is just analyzing um, the multiple portfolios, and um, that's another aspect of TidyQuant. Last but certainly not least, we've got the future coming up. I've heard a lot of questions from individuals. We're focusing on speed, connectivity, data, data sources, machine learning, AI, and also flying cars. God, that was a mouthful. All right, uh, we're not really focusing on flying cars. Last but certainly not least, uh, standing on shoulders. Without several of these uh, people in this audience, and also others uh, at our studio, we certainly would not be here talking about TidyQuant today. So thank you guys very much. All right, now I can breathe.